Welcome to my bedroom. Hi. My bedroom is probably one of the most private places I have. I don't tend to let you guys inside here. To be honest, there's not that much in here. That's the point. It's supposed to be a calming, safe space. Um, but there's a wardrobe packed with stuff, there's a bed, a bookcase, and this. I don't quite know what to call this. Some people call it a vanity, other people call it a makeup desk. Me, I call it my toot haven. For me, this is remarkably tidy right now. Um, hmm. For the longest time, I've wanted to do makeup desk tours, but for very good reasons, I've sort of held off. I've been hesitant. The idea of showing people your personal space, especially valuables, mm-hmm. But it's also one of the reasons why I'm showing you this, because I'm about to change all of this. Before Christmas, I found this mirror, and I am so happy with that. Four pounds, charity shop. So when that gets on here, there's less space. But also I'm going to declutter. There's things I'm going to sell, things I'm going to put into storage. I just wanted to document it before it all changed. So, let's talk about this. This desk was originally from Ikea, and it belonged to my sister for a good five years before it came to me. I had a different desk when I lived in London, and when I moved back home, my sister and I swapped the desks over. So that's how this desk came into my possession. It continued as my makeup desk when I was living with my parents, until I moved out last year. Oh, careful guys. For the first few months I lived here, I didn't have a proper working desk, so my makeup table vanished and I sort of used all these boxes to store my makeup and stuff, and this desk was my work desk. Just before the summer, I bought a massive desk from Ikea, and my life changed. There are just some purchases in life that make all the difference, and yeah, it allowed me to turn this back into a makeup table once again. And this is roughly what it's been like since last summer. So the first thing on the makeup table is this. This is my toot tray. I later found this, so this is sort of a second toot tray. When I'm super tired or I've come home late, so I just take off my jewellery and put it there, and then deal with it in the morning. There's no time to tidy at the end of the day, or fuss around with the intricacies of your jewellery, just throw it off and get in bed. As for the shelves that you can see behind me, they're supposed to go on the wall, I think. They originally belonged to my brother and sister in the noughties. My parents have loaned them to me. I also purchased three of these shelves from a charity shop last autumn, and they've come in so handy. So I use that one there, and I have another one in the lounge. They're just good at adding a bit more height to things. Moving on... For those of you who've been watching me the last two years, you may be asking, where's all your perfume? I made a very long perfume video going into the depths of my passion for perfume uh, at the end of 2017. I adore perfume. I, I, oh, it makes me so happy. But this year I've sort of stuck to wearing one or two perfumes. I've cut down on my usage. I still adore perfume, but I feel more myself when I wear certain fragrances over all the fragrances I use. So I've been giving my perfumes away to my mum and my sister. So my mum's got a whole makeup stand of her perfume, my perfume, uh, my sister's trying things. I think it's better to share, especially as I wasn't really using some of them. I was more hoarding them than using them. So up here, these are the four that I primarily wear. Perfume from DKNY, Hollister, I think that's supposed to be for men, but oh well. If I want it, I will use it. This perfume in particular is so strong. Sometimes too strong. The most smallest amount can last me hours. It's sort of the perfume I wear when I want to feel very sexy. And then next to it, we have my ultimate favorite perfume, which is Bon Bon by Victor and Rolf, which I'm nearly out of. It's lasted me two years. Um, at some point in my future, I will buy another, but for now, I'm sort of saving what I have left. And then we have a baby one here. Down here in the bigger parts, we have Dot. We have Flower Bon by Victor and Rolf. Um, oh, and Rose Gem by Lush. I don't wear that as much as I wish I could. I do sometimes find it quite overpowering. Anyway, those are the perfumes that I have and wear. I've had these two trays from Muji for about four years now. I no longer buy things like that, especially plastic. I reuse things, so there's several metal tins that I've been using on and off for the last two years. But for now, I'm still making use of these. I've bought them, I might as well. So we have two separate ones. We have one for makeup, and the other one is for nail polish, perfumes I don't wear as frequently. 
and a whole tin of various hairbrushes. Yes, I have very short hair. Why do I need hairbrushes? Well, I have wigs. There we go. I cut back my hair this week. I've like laid it and made it blunter to try and hide the hair loss. I do still need a hairbrush. This is a makeup stand that belonged to my grandma and I don't know how old it is. It could be from the 70s, maybe even earlier than that. I have memories of a child looking at this and seeing all of grandma's um, clip-on earrings, pearls in particular, uh, in the top. When my granddad moved homes, he gave this to me and I love it. It's not something I use every day, it's more like long-term storage. So we have watches, we have my religious drawer. This was the last thing my granddad bought for me before he passed, uh, for my birthday, for my 25th. And inside I keep any of my pendants related to God and faith. I also have a drawer for my main tangle, because I'm always losing it. <laughs> Up here we have lipsticks. I've cut down. <laughs> You'll see that I colour code my lipsticks to make it easier. Uh, when I'm rooting around, I just look at the stickers for the colour rather than the names. Up here we have two pots. One is a glass jar from Bon Mama. Across my flat right now, I have about 10 different Bon Mama jars scattered around for various different storage uses. There was a period when I used loads in here, but I try to simplify. So the small glass jar has things like eyeliners, lip liners, some eye brushes. Next to it we have my bigger brushes and this tin has come from Paper Chase. I have a few things um, in that style across my home. Okay, let's just shuffle along. This is my magical hairdryer that I've had for about nine years. This has been everywhere with me, it just, it just never stops. This is my makeup stool that I bought from a charity shop for two pounds about four years ago. Up here is where I store my main cosmetics, so my big body lotion from Palmer's, it's fantastic. Hashtag not spawn. A small jar of cotton wool balls, we have hair products, hand creams, face cream, eye cream. It's just very general, these are the things that I love the most. Things like this a hand cream that I take out with me, um, or moisturiser when I travel. These are my hair straighteners, I found these for about two or three, mind. I found these for about two or three pounds in a charity shop a couple of years ago and they've been brilliant. <laughs> I don't use these to straighten my hair, I use them to add a bit of a curl. Especially right now as I'm losing my hair, when it's straight it sort of shows up a lot more. So just adding a bit more of a kink to it helps. So let's move on to jewellery. Mm. I adore jewellery. Jewellery is one of those things that makes me feel more myself. It's like a form of expression. I love the way it looks, I love the way it makes me feel. But it's not just the way that jewellery looks, it's the history. I'm a big fan of vintage jewellery and jewellery fairs. I bought this box in 2016 in Lincoln. It was actually in a vintage shop, but I don't think it is vintage. There's no labels or anything like that, so I don't even know what it's made of. I am quite attached to this. I'd been searching for something like this for so many years, so when I saw it in the shop, it called to me. In here is where I keep my pendants and my main rings. I'm a big fan of Mother of Pearl. I adore it. Depending on the pieces, sometimes you can see rainbow. In this big piece in particular, it's, it's stunning. This I bought last year, around the time that I started my relationship. This I bought in Oregon, or on my way to Oregon. I'm not sure if it's glass or not, when you hold it up to the light it's see-through, but I love that. I've worn that in far too many videos. There's so many stories for every piece in this box. Um, I could spend another hour talking about everything in here. And then in here it's just junk. Pretty junk. We have thumbstones, they're good for trichotillomania and people who fidget. We have one of my snake bracelets. It's just a general pretty tut drawer. Cool. There we go. If we just pan to the left of my makeup table, on the wall I have an accessory hanging stand. I don't have that many chains, I have four at most, I think, and I have lots of pendants, so when I go to put something on every day, um, I just change the pendant from the day before, but most of the necklaces on there, they don't come off their chains. The pendant is sort of integrated with the chain in some way. That's how I sort of differentiate those by what's in my box. 
This is a jewellery stand that my mum bought for me for my 22nd birthday. It's gone everywhere with me over the last four or five years. I must admit that I don't tend to wear the things on the stand. I have done in my past. You might be able to spot some of the necklaces in other videos I've done. It's sort of more, I don't know, decorative. I forgot to mention this, actually. This is a rosary that my Auntie Kay gave to me when I was 14. My Auntie Kay is Catholic and her faith is, is, is strong. And when she went traveling, she brought that back for me. Um, and above it, we have a necklace that I've had for about five years. It's ginormous. I should say there's also my grandma's cross that's up here. Um, it's like a religious bit. Here are the majority of my dangly earrings. There's a few here I've kept for sentimental reasons, um, like those. They were one of the first purchases I made from a vintage store as an adult. I bought those in Canterbury. A previous boyfriend gave those to me. Can't get rid of them. One of you made these for me 10 years ago. You gave them to me Christmas 2009. Um, I made those. We have lots of mother of pearl. More gold. Not necessarily real gold. Ooh. I'm busy, darling. Go away. But that's everything above the desk. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, we've got the drawers, haven't we? So this is everything inside the drawer. And this is actually pretty tidy for me. We've got some rollable perfumes, oils from Tisserand. This is like a medical box. Painkillers, cream for my chillblains. Hair ponies, hair pins, most of which I don't need because I don't have hair, so that box is kind of hidden. We have various earrings, some dangly, some quite big from the 80s. Some of these belong to my mum. We have general things, yes, a Swiss army knife from my tour around Europe 10 years ago. Nail clippers, hairdressing scissors. To the left of the big drawer is a smaller drawer and inside I have all my palettes and makeup wipes. So now, let's descend down below. This is my hair shaving kit. Um, I now have a portable one so I can shave my hair anywhere I like. Whereas before I was kind of stuck to where I could move with my lead. We have hair accessories. I've been building this stash, there's another bag somewhere, uh, for over 20 years bracelets. Now I've got rid of lots of bracelets in my time. I'm not a massive fan of them despite the fact I have a big box. I get quite paranoid with things around my wrists. I have exceptionally small wrists so things fall off. Um, things like this aren't too bad. They sort of lock me in like cuffs. At the very back is a box of glasses and then here we have a large box of hairbands. I have a travel jewellery kit that I can take on the plane with me. This is my wonderful stash of Lush perfume. Oh, you can smell the Lush as soon as you open the lid. I've actually given some away recently. Um, this is what's left. The stuff I couldn't part with. And that's it. You may have noticed that my mirror is actually hung above the makeup table. Well, despite the fact I have a chair, I, I usually do my makeup standing up. Lots of the time I'm in a rush. I just run in, stand here, do all my bits and bobs and then run, or I take some stuff with me. When I do go to London, I am one of those women who will do their makeup on the train. I draw the line at nail polish, though. That's unkind. That's unfair. I can't do eyeliner on the train, though. Not well, anyway. Amazingly, I bought this mirror for a pound, and there were two others that were slightly smaller that are in my flat elsewhere right now. Together, they'd originally been a dressing table mirror set that had broken and somebody had converted them so they could hang, which is what they're doing now. They're battered, scratched, a bit messy, but they're quite sturdy. And I like them. So that brings me to the end of this video, and I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Thank you ever so much for watching. I mean, this is more for me to document this for me and my future self. Um, but if you've come along for the journey, I hope you've enjoyed it. Right, I'm now going to go. I'm going to go and make myself a lem sip and try and feel a bit better. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank goodness she's gone. I can be naughty now. Let me out! Let me out!